Well, howdy. This is Tommy again from Alderman Farms. And uh, boy, that didn't take long. Posted the video yesterday of uh, finding out, you know, that my, my beehive had no honey in it. And as a, as a new guy, I just didn't have any idea what was going on. Very, I'm very inexperienced at this. And, uh, but shout out to uh, my beekeeping pals and the beekeeping community. Uh, especially Kaylee Richardson over at the Honeystead. If you're not familiar with the Honeystead on, uh, that's one word, Honeystead, just like Homestead, Honeystead, Kaylee Richardson. She is a rock star and she's so kind and uh, willing to share information. And she jumped on, I uh, actually released that video as a premiere and she jumped in the chat and, and pretty quickly helped me understand what was going on. Uh, yeah, I goofed putting some, um, putting the extra frames in there, especially at the time that I did. So <laughs> learn from my mistakes. Uh, there's a lot of stuff you need to be aware of and know if you're gonna successfully keep bees. And one of the things that you need to know is the flow schedule for your area. So it turns out that this time of the year, we're in a dearth. Now the goldenrod is just about ready to, to start a, a new fl a flow for the goldenrod. So, uh, but apparently, you know, just about the time that the dearth was about to set in is when I added those frames. Because at the time, y'all, and you have to go back and look at my videos before the last one, uh, this, this, this hive was thriving. It was packed full of bees. There were several frames that had brewed uh, in the middle with a nice pattern and capped honey along the top. Um, they looked great, and I freaked out. Oh, my gosh, they're going to leave. And uh, Randy at Dirt uh, 628 Dirt Rooster Bees tried to tell me not to put so many frames. And, you know, it's not that I thought to myself, what does he know? Because I know he knows infinitely more than I do. But I don't know. I just I, I followed my gut on that, and my gut was stupid or as I like to say, stupid. My gut was stupid. And uh, they just didn't have enough bees to police all that space. And I think it might have uh, made them think they needed to start, I don't know, whatever, whatever. But the main thing is I did that to them in the beginning of a dearth. And so they've had to eat their reserves to survive. Well, guess what? I want to be as natural beekeeping as I can possibly be. Uh, but at the same time, I don't want to, uh, I don't want to let my bees starve to death. <laughs> and a uh, big shout out to Jeffrey Kellum, who is not on YouTube or anything, but he's a local guy, sells honey at the farmer's market. Super nice, super helpful. He sent me a, uh, a text message string about a foot long last night, and it was all good information. And he pointed me to a video by Barnyard Bees on how they make a feeder out of a two gallon bucket. And uh, doggone it, I should have, I don't know what I was thinking about. I guess I was in such a hurry to get out here today and um, put this, put this uh, syrup in there for these bees. Um, I should have filmed what I was doing. I'm a terrible YouTuber. Um, but I'll put a link in, the, in the, this description to that video by Barnyard Bees and, and so you can see how uh, he makes those feeders. It's it's ingenious and it works great so far. Let, let me show what it looks like inside the uh, the hive. For me, I'm able to get a two gallon bucket inside this hive. So I'm not sure if you can tell what uh, by looking down here. And I'm not suited up, so we'll see if I get stung. If I drop the phone, you'll know. Um, but these buckets come with ready made troughs right here. You see that? And so what I did was from, from inside the bucket, in between each of these little brackets, I drilled a little hole. He said to use the smallest bit, I had a 16th. So I drilled a 16th hole in from the bucket, coming out of the bucket into this little trough, obviously not going through this because then, then it would leak everywhere. Um, <laughs> now, uh, Randy, 628 Dirt Rooster Bees, uh, commented on uh, barnyard bees video showing how to do this to make sure you seal the lid down good before you turn it upside down because he got baptized in two gallons of syrupy water and I think it was on church day I think it was on Sunday <laughs> so 
Anyway, now I've got two gallons of syrup right here, and because of uh, because of the way I'm using this uh, horizontal hive, I've got this open space where I can turn a two gallon feeder up inside uh, of this feeder. So hopefully that'll discourage robbing. We'll see. We'll see. Um, because the, this entrance over here is plugged up. Can't see it. Can't see it. But it's plugged up. So the entrance to the hive is over is is over here on this end. And there is a bee space underneath this board, but they, you know, any robbers will have to come through the, uh, the existing bees to get to it. Um, so we're going to see how that works. So anyway, again, just a, a shout out to all those who have gone before me and who are so willing to share their knowledge. Uh, Kaylee uh, really just did such a, she's, she's just such a sweetheart. She's so kind and encouraging. Um, and she was able to tell me what a moron I was without making me feel like a moron <laughs> or making me feel like more of a moron than I really am. Hey, Alderman Farms, where uh, life on the farm just got real, right? So this is real. I screwed up by not knowing uh, the nectar flow calendar for my area. Uh, but I can promise you this. Next year, I'll know. I won't, and I, I will begin doing research, and I'll have it on a calendar, uh, probably with reminders in my phone <laughs> uh, when the different flows are. Um, and so I'll be better equipped to, to take care of my bees or help them take care of themselves and not put them in a situation like I did this year. Uh, my buddy Jeffrey, I was mentioning a, a, a moment ago, my local friend Jeffrey, uh, by the way, he recommended a 1 to a 1.5, 1 1.5 to 1 ratio on the syrup. And so that's what I did. And uh, talking to Randy, he even said after the fall flow, he bumps it up to a 2 to 1. Uh, so we'll see, but that's a, it's a, I, I mixed, I used Jeff's formula It's kind of a simple way to get roughly a one and a half to one ratio is two gallons of hot water, warm water, not boiling, um, but pretty warm, two gallons of water and a 25 pound bag of sugar, which I mixed up with a handheld paint mixer thing on my, the, that you attach to your drill. And I mixed all that up all together in a, in a five gallon bucket. I bought two of those two gallon buckets that, that I made that feeder out of. And so what didn't go into this feeder, um, I couldn't fill it all the way up obviously because you didn't want to come up past the holes I had drilled, but the remainder was able to fit inside the other two gallon bucket that I bought. And so I've got it sealed and I'll keep it stored in a cool place and Jeff, uh, my buddy Jeff Kellen told me, don't be surprised if they suck this down, you know, pretty quick. <laughs> so we'll see. I'll, I'll try to check it, you know, every, every day or so just to kind of see how, you know, compare the weight to see how much of it that, that they're drinking. But again, Kaylee Richardson, thank you so much. Everybody go check her out at The Honeystead on um, Facebook and on YouTube and I think on Instagram. I'm not sure about that. Um, thanks to my buddy Jeff Kellum here locally. Thanks to Randy uh, at 628 Dirt Rooster Bees who has chimed in. Um, thanks to Barnyard Bees for the brilliant design of the, of the feeder. What an inexpensive way uh, to have a, a feeder that can hold a quantity of liquid. And uh, thanks to Baddest Bees for stirring me up this morning. For <laughs> You know, I appreciate people that don't pull punches. And uh, he sure didn't pull any punches. He shoots, he shoots straight uh, from the hip. But anyway, <laughs> I appreciate candor in any event. So uh, learn from my mistakes, boys and girls. Um, um, uh, the, the, the thing is, we're going to make mistakes. That was an unforced error. That was a mistake I should not have made. I should have known about that, but I didn't. And, but now I do. And so the, now I look forward to the next thing that I should have known about. <laughs> but don't so i'll keep you posted you know we'll i'll i'll come back in this hive i don't know i'll i'll give them a little while i'll watch i'll watch from the hive from the hive entrance or i'll watch the hive entrance to make sure i got activity there um and i do today and uh we'll keep tabs on them that way for a little bit and then you know once i have once they drink down this two gallons of stuff i'll see what's going on in there but I appreciate you watching. 
people wanted an update here's the update i'm feeling better even though i'm still a moron i'm feeling better because now now the bees have got stuff to hold them over until the the goldenrod flow begins hey thanks for watching give us a subscribe for a more moronic activity at alderman farms where life on the farm just got real and go check out the honeystead and barnyard bees and 628 dirt rooster bees and baddest bees if you want some straight shooting from the hip and uh appreciate you guys thanks for watching have a great day